Welcome to Rockcast. Dyson Production. Hey folks, what's up? Welcome to Rockcast 2.0. The return. The return. And right now, you're going to listen to a little bit of Decepticides. Cease to exist. Uh, the song is To Ashes. And it's just their intro music. Uh, and I hope they're not mad at me for using this. But gosh darn it, I fucking love that band. I'm sitting here, of course, in motherfucking Dire Sin Production Studios, also known as my home, away from home. I'm like the mechanic that lives in the uh, shop. If you don't know who Decepticide is, Decepticide is an Alaskan metal band <laughs> consisting of my old band, Murder is Justice. <clears throat> And uh, they're fucking amazing. I, I think they're probably the premier heavy metal band in Alaska right now. Uh, so that's cool. Anyways, I just wanted to uh, show off some of their music and shit. I got a bunch of music and a bunch of stuff from my good buddy Spit Sean. And i um, really, really fucking excited to show it off. It's just fucking beauty right there, man. Fucking beautiful. So it's been a while since I've done an episode, folks. Everything went down. I had to redo everything, get it all set back up. Uh, I just went to Alaska, and pretty much this episode's going to be about that trip. I'll be putting in some pictures and stuff. And, uh, yeah. So... I plan on running music as I go through this, and at one point after this intro segment here, I am going to stop uh, and, of course, uh, check it all, make sure that it's doing good, because that's very important, because I've learned anything is that, uh, let's get that down to a reasonable level there, Time Lord by my another band this one is a Washington band but uh, it comes from motherfucking Alaska in heart and soul in a band that used to be called Dopiate which was dope what's going on here alright guys on this episode of Rockcast 2.0 I'm going to be talking about my Alaska trip uh, how awesome it was what I did why I did it who I did it with and there might be a small little part where I may bitch about a little show thing, but uh, outside of that, it was an amazing trip. And I had a great time, and I got to spend time with my kids, my family, all that shit. And, uh, man, it really just, it was killer. The very first night I was there, uh, the very first night I was there, I got treated like a fucking rock star, man. I headed out to... Uh, that's annoying. I headed out to a rock fest in Wasilla, Alaska. And, man, it was like nothing I had ever seen in Alaska in a long time. I mean... Mm, we're, today we're going to be smoking... What's up, Lester? I got my co-host, my audio engineer back there licking his own asshole. That's Lester. Lester! What are you doing, mister? What are you doing? He's my roommate's dog, but he likes to hang out with me while she's running a restaurant. He's my little dude. He's actually convinced me maybe to get a small dog. Where you at? What are you doing? You want to come up here? You want to come up here and be in the podcast? Come on. Come on, little ninja. Come on, parkour. Come on. Studio. You're going to tear up the whole studio. There he is. Lester. Guys, this is Lester. He's my new audio producer. At least until Ian gets out of all of his surgeries and stuff. Yeah. But yeah, man, I went to that rock fest, man, and uh, Them Bones was playing, which is an Allison Cover Chains cover band, which uh, 
has Brock Linda, Linda, I never say his name right, from 36 Crazy Fist, and uh, Justin Carey, this kid that fucking turns out to be one hell of a guitar player, but he was, I call him a kid, he's almost 30 now, but he was a kid when I met him, hold on, you dog, huh, little parkour bastard, jumps right through the gate, don't lick me in the face, don't blow marijuana smoke at you. Ways to go till this life's done with we. I've got a ways to go, a ways to go till this church done with me. Oh, your breath smells like probably your asshole since you were just licking it. Why don't you go away? Go on. There you go, super dog. He looks like that fucking future Rama dog. So yeah, the first night I get there, I'm fucking... Hold on. So I get to the fucking festival. Already the mask thing is gone. Like, I figured that out real quick in Alaska. Ain't nobody wearing no goddamn mask. They don't give a fuck. They bare wrestled fucking COVID to the ground. So I get there. It's a huge festival. I get put on the VIP list. I didn't even find out later that the ticket system were like 48 bucks a pop. I also got one of my friends in with me, Carl Whiskey Brewbaker, the other half. The now harmonica and guitar player. From weed and whiskey. Um, he, uh, <coughs> we get in there. <coughs> I see boobs. Saint Boobs here. I see boobs, who is now a candle of the Eternal Cowboys. And he pulls me immediately back behind the gate into the cool backstage area. So my first night back in Alaska, and I immediately get to go back behind the orange fence, which, you know, it's cool, dude. And then my cousin, Victoria, shout out, man. She fucking was back there with the motorhome, treating me like a rock star. Bob from Kaywell came up and was like, Mr. Reed. And, and Brock introduced me to his wife as one of Alaska's premier metal voices. That just, I mean, dude... It, it felt it felt good, man. It felt fucking good to remember that I used to be somebody. Well, it's still him, but I mean, huge shout out, dude. The fucking gravestone, Pete, fucking Bob from K. Well, Victoria, her old man Travis, uh, who is also in them bones. I got to meet him. He's a great kid. Uh, boobs and Josh Olson, of course, and the bass player dude is. Like Ray, I think I can't remember his name for some reason right now. Oh, and then of course Marty and Brandy Rathburn. Uh, they own Musala Mode, and they are apparently amazing employees because I went to stop by their restaurant and it was Memorial Day weekend, and these motherfuckers give their whole staff a four day weekend. Cool. I mean, I'm only in Alaska for a couple days. Want to try out your new place, Marty? But that's cool that you do that. As a restauranteur, I got to tell you how awesome that is. Because most places, that's a money day, man. <laughs> or actually, it's really not. A lot of people go out of town. If you're an out-of-town place, then Memorial Weekend's great. If it's somewhere where you can swing by the fucking... Oh, this joint is fucking killer. Killer. Look how good these burns, man. These are my fucking damas. <coughs> Dama is a great brand. You know where you could find it. You know. You know that you got to be 21 years or older if you want to enjoy it. And you know that you could come find it where I work. At the good old Emerald Coast Cannabis. ECC, baby. <coughs> because I'm recording the Twitch thing. Because Facebook is a whore. Facebook is... Fuck you, dude. You you are a bully. You you can't keep doing... Look, the fact that I even... It bothers me as much as it does. But, like, I'm dependent on it. You made me dependent on you, like a drug. I fucking... It's lame, but when I was in Alaska, I like sharing. I, I've become... It's kind of my thing. I wasn't able to do that. You took that from me. I also wasn't able to promote... So, all right. So, yeah, man, that Rockfest shit was awesome. And everybody there and... Uh, it was the first sober time I'd ever gone to a, a metal show like that. <clears throat> and uh, what was annoying was that I brought my friend Carl with me. And for the first time in my life, 
I, ironically, got to drunk wrestle one of my friends out of a concert, which led to me later apologizing profusely to his wife for every time I've ever, ever been dealt with like that. Jesus Christ. And trying to find a bouncing, drunken, red-bearded man in an Alaska mosh pit. Well, I counted nine huge red beards just bouncing around each other. Bouncing around each other. No. Yeah. But I'm glad I got to hang out. You know, Whiskey's been my friend for a long time. He's actually been there for me in several different ways. As, like, life-saving ways. So, I fucking, uh... <coughs> I dig him. One of the cool things also that was uh, there was Spit Sean. Oops. Um, and Spit Sean hooked me up with a bunch of really cool shit. A bunch of it. I uh, got a bunch of stickers that I'll show, or, or, or uh, patches, and then at least 10 CDs of, uh, now, uh, Sean gave me all these CDs and shit. <coughs> <coughs> he gave me two of them that were incredibly important to me and really hard to find these days. One of them was from my band. I don't know how well it's coming out with the light. Machine Corpse. Machine Corpse was my longest lasting band. And uh, probably my favorite due to the tightness and... Uh, did that. He liked that. I don't know why, but he did. Yeah, he scanned that little barcode right there. There's all our songs, including his destructive remix that he did on there. I also got two Decepticide CDs, Kill Tango, fucking Mercy Should Hurt, fucking all sorts of shit. But then I got this. This is the very first band I was in. This is Hate Slave. I named the band Hate Slave because I hate myself and I'm a slave to her emotions. Pretty much every song was written about drug addiction or my, my ex, Stacy, um, at the time. She's a lovely, a lovely woman and the mother of my children. So she's cool. Dennis Reed vocals, Joe Kilhoffer, fuck you Joe, on guitar, Sean fucking Farmer on bass, and Brian Earl on drums. <clears throat> Brian Earl and I, he and uh, Josh and Farmer at the time wanted me in another band with him called Dyer, which was for sure my favorite band uh, by far, <clears throat> uh, just for the style of music it was. Also, that was the band that was slated to open for Lamb of God, which I have my ticket right there. I'm not going to touch it because it got wet and it's very fragile. But that show got canceled, and in my head, so did Alaska. <laughs> That's why I live here now. All this shit was drawn... Look at that. <laughs> Hateslave.com. By hand, by Sean Farmer. And he did such awesome work. If you look on, if, I don't know if you could see any of them. It's not really pointed at the right wall. But I got a bunch of his hand-drawn flyers. <clears throat> they were dope. So, without further ado, now mind you, this is different. This is way different. And this is a live recording... <clears throat> from uh, the North Slope restaurant. And uh, I designed that too. I got fired from my own fucking band. I did, rightfully so, in hindsight. Rightfully so. The name of this album is uh, Remastered and Still Fucking Free. Our first CD which was pretty much this one, was called Fuck You, It's Free. And our thing was like, well, if you don't like it, use it as a coaster or something. We really don't give a fuck. Because <laughs> we use metals. Yeah, and actually it got remastered from this show. Uh, part of it was we got studio time or something. But it's horrible. But it's really good. It's different voice before I knew how to sing scream which 
here we go. This is my friend. Don't judge me, man. This shit is screamo, emo. I don't even know what. It's definitely crack induced. Reminds me a lot of uh, motherfucking uh, my new band, Rising of the Tides. It's raw. It's there. It's it's. Uh, where'd my list go? Motherfucker, there it is. Let's see. What's next? Oh, here we go. Here's an Audi Bugatti. Speaking of machine corpse. Now this. Did, 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 did. 
This anthem shit. You know, you grow as a musician. But, yeah. Anyways, and then there was uh, the weed store situation, man. Fucking Alaska, you did it right. And don't worry about your distillates and dabs. That price will go down, but... Mindset! But holy shit, man. Ooh. Is that beast? This is a new one we got in. I haven't tried this one yet. Man. You guys get to grow your weed in your store. Where you sell the weed. Cultivate the weed. Everything. Looks like good weed in there. Let's see. Ten dollar joint better be green. There we go. Fucking that solo is Matt Sandturf Weber. I remember to throw a shout out to him. He was our first lead guitar player. Uh, wow, dude, loved his shit. He became a singer in Lidless Eye, and now he's in another band called Something. I can't remember what without looking. Oops. Sorry, my keyboard's a little further so I could do the cool thing here. Also, the first night, or the next night, I can't remember. <laughs> it all got blurred together. <laughs> and that's without drinking. <laughs> oh, Jesus. She's <laughs> a rough one. <laughs> but, uh, what are you doing, Lester? But, uh, I went out to Shumway Studios out there in Big Lake and got to hang out and watch what is sure to be the next biggest fucking band out there uh, in Alaska right now. And that is going to be the amazing, talented... Uh, beyond Metal fucking band Mindful Chaos they are fucking just they're what's up next dude they're what's up next check them out Mindful Chaos if you don't know who they are you're a fool um, you're not a fool for not knowing who they are I don't know why I would say that you just don't know who they are yet but if you live in Alaska you're about to find the F out the colors are terrible on that You can't see it, man. Uh, this looks stupid. <coughs> I had to reload everything. <coughs> so I lost <coughs> all my <coughs> cool stuff, man. I lost it all. I lost my mind. I didn't want it. I didn't need it. It was just full of bullshit anyways. <clears throat> Pat Eblen, the mastermind behind the band Dead Language. God damn, this keyboard's in my way. Oh, this joint's fucking me up. <laughs>